Owls in the Family, Chapter 6, Part 2. All right, just before we start our reading today, and I know you're anxious to find out what was in the box, what was the surprise pet, but we'll get to that in a sec. Um, I just want to touch back on something that was mentioned earlier, and they said that wool uh, was mostly white with a bit of black. Now, I've told you before that great horned owls can be all kinds of colors. They can be more gray, they can be more brown. Um, so there is a great variety. And wool being mostly white with a bit of black is not common. And you might think that he is an albino. We're going to talk about what that is. So here's some pictures of owls that are all white. Um, and you'll notice that they don't have a bit of black at all, except for maybe the pupil of their eye, but their beak has no color, their claws, their talons have no color, and there's just absolutely no color. Uh, it's just white. Now, wool's not exactly like that, but we're going to talk about what this is, because this is a fascinating um, thing that can happen in nature. So I mentioned the word, word albino. Um, if someone has this, an animal or a person, they are said to have albinism. Okay, and what is that? Well, that is a lack of pigmentation. And that is a scientific word for color. So there is no color uh, in their outward appearance. Okay, um, now how does that happen? Well, we all have genes that make up our DNA. Now, you cannot see those you, with your eye. You have to have uh, super microscopes and things like that. Scientists work with genes and DNA. And those uh, genes and DNA, you get those from your parents. You'll get some from your mom, some from your dad. And that's why... Um, you're not exactly the same as your brothers and sisters because they will not get exactly the same genes that you do, but you will have some similar ones. So you can tell that your brothers or sisters, you might have some of the same looks or same abilities, but you're never going to be exactly the same. All right, so building blocks. So that means they make up exactly who you are. So what do genes do? Well, they determine the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, um, whether your hair is curly or straight, um, the length of your legs, how tall you're going to be, what your fingernails look like, um, what condition your internal organs are in, um, do you have a larger heart, a smaller heart, um, uh, all kinds of things. So every single thing about the outside of you and the inside of you is determined by your genes. Okay. Um, now what can happen is sometimes parents can carry what's called a recessive gene. And that means they carry the gene, but in them, it does not, um, show itself. So both your parents could have a recessive gene for red hair, let's say, but neither of them will have red hair. So if two parents with a recessive gene for red hair, uh, so let's say we have parent one, parent two, this parent has black hair, this parent has blonde hair, and they have a baby, and the baby gets both of those recessive genes for red hair, then they could have a red haired baby, okay? Um, now, sometimes what happens is in nature and uh, in animals and humans, that recessive gene is the gene for albinism or to be an albino. So you can get uh, animals that have no pigmentation or no color. Now, I wrote at the top here, very rare, and this is absolutely true. Um, to see these animals or people that have no color uh, is extremely rare. And the uh, one of the distinguishing factors is if you look at the eyes, and I know you can really notice it here on this kangaroo, the eyes can be pink, okay? So um, 
So that means that they definitely have uh, albinism, okay? So you can look at these animals and you think, oh, that's pretty cool and wouldn't that be neat to see an animal like that? For, but for the animal, it is bad news, okay? And this is for a number of reasons. Um, one, if you think about camouflage, how, how would a lion that is white camouflage into grasses which are brown I mean it couldn't do that um, so camouflage but a bigger bigger threat to them is humans some humans think oh that is so cool I want uh, to have that animal as an exotic pet or uh, I want to kill that animal and keep the skin of it or I want to show it to somebody and they capture the animal take it out of the wild so for those animals to be able to survive in the wild is really, really, really tough. Okay. And for human beings, it's really tough to have that condition as well. Because as you know, uh, people stare at people that look different. And it's very, very rare to see somebody like that. And so life for humans uh, that have albinism can be very, very difficult as well. And it's, it's just hard for them to be out in the sun as well. Their skin just doesn't have the protection that, that it needs. Now, we were talking about, oh, you got a sneak peek there. We were talking about wool. And he is white, mostly white with a little bit of black. So he might have a partial form or a genetic mutation that just made his colors just a little bit more different than the other uh, great horned owls. All right, so what was in the box? What was in the box was a rattlesnake. There you see the rattle right there, that is sound it makes when it is feeling like it's in danger and needs to protect itself. And there you see its fangs. And the fangs, if they bite you uh, through the fangs, it will deliver poison and you could get very sick or possibly die from a rattlesnake bite. I guess you can imagine what happened next. All the people shoving and pushing to get away from us got the animals so upset that they began to stampede too. The skunk got crowded into a storefront and that scared him and he did what skunks always do when they get scared. There were calves and goats going every which way and the dogs all went crazy and started chasing anything that ran. And that was everything there was. Our two cages got upset and squashed and all the gophers and white rats went skittering off under people's feet. Wool climbed on top of my head and kept beating his wings, so I couldn't see too much of what was happening, but I could still hear it. Women were screaming, and one of the Mounties had hauled out his big revolver and was waving it in the air, while the other one never stopped blowing his silver whistle. All you could hear was yells and howls and barks and screams and yowls. I tell you, there, had, there never had been anything like it in Saskatoon for a hundred years. We didn't stick around any longer than we could help. We saved the wagons, our two dogs, the owls, and that darn snake. Bruce grabbed the shoebox the moment the ruckus started and stuck to it like a burr until we got back to my place. I just want to pause there for a moment. On the next page, I'm going to show you a picture that I have showed you earlier in the year. And you had to guess what was going on in the picture. So just stop and think for a minute about all these things that are happening. And I wonder if you can recall that picture that we did. It was for reading and it was for inferring. You had to look at this picture. It had animals in it. It had, um, it looked like the animals were going crazy all over the picture. There were lots of people in the picture. I'll show that to you in a sec. Gee, he said, as we were getting a drink from our garden hose, if I'd lost that old snake, I'd have got my britches tanned. That means he would have gotten a spanking. From here to Mexico. It belongs to our hired man and it's been his pet for 15 years ever since he was a cowboy down in the Cypress Hills. It's so old, it hasn't any teeth, nor any poison either. 
but he sure is fond of it all the same. It sleeps right with him in his bunk. I still think we should have won first prize. So here is the picture that we actually looked at and uh, tried to guess what might have been happening in this picture earlier in the year. So I don't know if you can see uh, the dog with the stripes painted on him there. And here are the wagons that they tried to make look like a circus. So they put the striped uh, cloth on there to make it look like a circus. And here's, I think it is Mutt with his fur around his collar, trying to make him look like a lion. And let's see if we can find some of these smaller animals. So there's a gopher right there. There's another gopher right there. You guys have better eyes than me, so I'm sure you can find some little white rats and stuff. Oh, there's a rat right there. There's the skunk. And then we've got the dogs just chasing everything, the cats and chasing the skunk. This poor little guy here is going after his turtle. Um, there's the Mountie, the RCMP officer they were talking about waving his gun in the air. Um, you can see that kids are yelling and parents are trying to get away. And here are our three boys trying to save their wagons. And um, this, there is the box and there is the snake. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's the snake in the box. Okay. And my favorite, personal favorite, is this goat who seems to be wearing... Uh, like pajamas, but I guess he's supposed to look like a clown. Now, I don't see the owls anywhere in here. I'm just going to erase this. Oopsie doodles. Let's go backwards on that. Um, I'm just going to erase some of this to see if the owls are anywhere in this picture here. Because I don't really see them anywhere. In the story, it said it was riding on Billy's shoulder, but but I don't see the owls in this picture anywhere. So if you see them, you can let me know. All right, your research, research question for today um, is, are, 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 ow, bleh, I'm gonna try that again. Are all owls, try to say that fast, are all owls nocturnal? So what does that mean to be nocturnal? So nocturnal means to hunt, at night and sleep during the day. Okay, so some animals are nocturnal, some animals sleep during the day and hunt at night. And we tend to think that all animals do this. Okay, but that's the question, so you can answer yes or no. Now, if they are not, so if you answer no, which owls, so which ones, if we're talking about owls here, are diurnal? That means the opposite. That means they hunt during the day and they sleep at night. So that's not usually what we think of when we think of when we think of owls. Okay, and then in your research, if you can find out what a great horned owl does, that would be great. Um, so is a great horned owl nocturnal? Is it diurnal? Or is it something else? Okay, so you have a few questions there to answer today.